Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. Today is the 14th of December. Let's open the 14th of December. Can you guys believe that there's only 10 days left before like I'm out of Advent? That's really weird. Oh, this one is pretty. A blessing at Epiphany. I don't really know what that means, but it's fine. That's so pretty. I think I've kind of started to like this advent calendar as I go. It's just the idea of not opening a gift. I grew up in a situation where I was constantly given, um, every year we were given a Lego scene that was like a Christmas Lego scene to open for advents. My sock monkey yo-yo is coming at me. All right, so today we're going to be doing my mid-month November wrap-up. As you guys can see, I've definitely gone through a couple of books so let's dive in first is M. Patchett's Commonwealth now this one I heard about on Mercedes channel and I was through the roof excited to get into it and I loved it liked it but I didn't love it like Mercedes does and here's why I am NOT a family saga type I've realized this. I've come to terms with this. I don't do family sagas very well. I can tell you that right now, family saga wise, this is incredible. I love that aspect of it. Even though it's not my style, I can appreciate it. I can understand it. I could follow each of the characters. I could make a difference in my brain of who was who, who had what children, what they would look like in my mind. I had everybody like casted in my brain. But it still for me was a really hard thing to manage because family sagas just they don't do it for me. I don't really enjoy them as much as some of the other booktubes, booktubers in the community do. However, this story is not just about the family. It's about the experience of a split and separation of family that is started by one drunken mistake. And this story really experiences the differences in time and place. So from the 1960s on, this talks about the experience of a woman in the change of culture. This talks about the experience of children in the change of times. This talks about codependency and lowered expectations of relationships. What the relationship between a mother and father can do to a child and show them to be the acceptable relationship status in terms of like how they treat their spouses. I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great book. If you like family sagas, pick this up 110%. If you don't like family sagas, this is still a book that I would recommend picking up. It's beautifully written. It's absolutely fabulous. The characters are divine. I really enjoyed it. I just didn't love it. Next we have this. This is Carrie Fisher's Princess Diarist. Now, okay. <sighs> I read this from a very different standpoint, I think, than a lot of people did. On Goodreads, there was a huge array of mixed emotions and feelings. This is funny, this is weird, this is quirky, this is sad, and this is a really, really, really great way to get into the mind of a person with mental illness. I read this as a person with mental illness talking to me. So there is, you're in, so this is the memoir written by Carrie Fisher of her experience being within the Star Wars realm and world and becoming some sort of famous person to the world at a really young age of 19 and being non-diagnosed with bipolar disorder and experiencing the world from a really dark place and a really strange place and a time of drugs and alcohol and fame and change and self-medication. So that is how I read it. It is a really interesting depiction of that. I think it's a fabulous piece for somebody who is a fan of Star Wars. So there's a section, there's quite a few sections in here that come directly from her diary that she was writing during her experience on set of Star Wars. Those were really interesting to read. There is a conversation in here of her relationship with Harrison Ford. I could care less about that. I never really... I shipped Leia and Han, but Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher, like, not really. Um, however, there's definitely some interesting conversations on 
semi unethical relations like as far as an older man taking advantage of a younger woman kind of thing like it I don't, I don't really know. I, I felt a little uncomfortable in certain situations, but it was definitely on behalf of Carrie Fisher rather than, like, because of Carrie Fisher. Like, there was some feelings involved in that. Reading it from the perspective of the mind of a person with mental illness, it's a really good dive into what that might look like and the chaos and self-hatred and confusion that it does do. Next, we... We? Yes, well, yeah. <laughs> Next, we read Sarah Waters' Fingersmith. And this one I read with a couple of my alters up front because a couple of us were very interested in it. I liked this way more than I liked Tipping the Velvet. I actually really enjoyed it. It had mystery. It had a little bit more of that kind of Daphne du Maurier feel. It had a romance that... I wasn't crazy about because I'm just not crazy about romances but it didn't overly control the plot and I really enjoyed that aspect of it I really enjoyed the story behind the Victorian England theft feel there was definitely an element of me sort of seeing the Oliver Twist like boys that were Fagin's gang like it was really well done. I really liked it. The characters were well developed and lovable and hateable and <laughs> admirable but still really obnoxious and very real and had some absolutely terrible qualities even though I really enjoyed them as people. I will continue with Sarah Waters for sure. Next I read Humanly. This is by Stevie Edwards. This is a story of trauma, rape, and mental illness from the perspective of poetry. I liked it. I liked Mad Hatter's Tea Party better. They don't really say outrightly a lot of the things. Like, this is more metaphorical and a little less point blank, like, and then I, and then this, and then that. But still really beautiful, really well done, definitely captures the vibe and the sadness and the devastation of a sexual assault. I really enjoyed it. If you haven't picked this up, I would recommend it at some point if you can get your hands on it, but I wouldn't say it's something that I would absolutely go down and chase. Blue Beyond Blue by Laura Slater. Now, <sighs> liked it. I did. It definitely touches on everything that I like. So psychology, fairy tale retellings, all of those things. I really enjoyed the writing style, but for some reason, I don't know why, it didn't hold up for me beside the the latest Matt Bell book I read. I can't remember the title. I'll write it here somewhere. That book did way more for me than this did, and I think if I'd read this first, I would have enjoyed it more, but because I'd already read the Matt Bell that I think did a better job of expressing and experiencing psychology and darkness and mental health and fairy tales, this felt a little short for me. But I still really enjoyed it. Like, I would definitely recommend it if you like fairy tales and mental health and psychology. It's fabulous, but I like Matt Bell's writing better. Okay, uh, mm. this is uh, Jared Way and Gabrielle Ba, The Umbrella Academy, Apocalypse Suit. Uh, okay, if you, all right, listen, it, uh, if you're not stoned, this does not make sense. It is, it is unfollowable. It's crazy. It's weird. This is so wacky. I don't even know how else to explain it. I so in the first like few pages the Eiffel Tower comes to life because of aliens but then there's zombies and there's some robot I don't know like I don't understand I couldn't follow what was happening it's definitely a superhero story there's a family of obscure superheroes who are a developed AI type 
creatures that are taken in. So the story starts out with there are 43 children born on the same day at the same time, and all of them die except for seven. A man decides to adopt all seven of them and turn them into superheroes, but some of them fail as superheroes. So they end up having to fight the battle of sci-fi versus zombies. I don't know. I don't understand. I, yeah, it, it confused me, it frustrated me, and it made me really, really, really overwhelmed. Really overwhelmed. I didn't like it. Mm -mm. This is The Maker of Swans by Parik Do O'Donnell. This was fabulous. I really love this. It is Victorian Gothic literature at its finest. Really obscure and fun. Super mysterious and weird and quirky. Definitely enjoyed it, but I'm not going to tell you anymore because I think going into it knowing barely anything was the best way to go into it. Then we have this. I finally read this. I don't know if the person who requested that I read this is still watching. If they are, let me know down below in the comments and I will do a full in-depth review of this for you. However, this made me sob uncontrollably. I I hated every character, but I felt for every single character. There is so much of an interesting family dynamic. It's almost like... It's almost like watching a film of that, like, one last Christmas where the whole family comes together and they all get their crap out on the table with each other, like, they dish on each other, and it's devastating and wonderful. I think for me the hardest thing, though, was watching the father character suffering from Parkinson's, and that is actually what my grandfather is suffering from right now, so I'm watching him deteriorate the way that this character deteriorates, and listening to the perspective of the father from his mind with Parkinson's was devastating to me and it made me sob so uncontrollably. His kids are kind of shits and his wife is really not 100% supportive of him but they're all trying and they're all trying to love each other the best they can but they all hate each other at the same time. It's really really hard to describe but I absolutely enjoyed it. It was definitely more of the family saga genre again which is not always my cup of tea but again this one worked really well for me and I enjoyed it immensely even though it made me sob for like two hours. Last, not least, this one comes out in February 17. Apparently this is in the Book of the Month Club, so it's getting early release, I guess, in the Book of the Month. This is Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller. Claire Fuller. Now, I liked her original novel better, um, which was Our Endless Number Days. I liked it better. But I really enjoyed this. This is a story of two girls whose father has an accident after he believes that he sees his wife, who he thinks is dead. The story revolves around... The point of views revolve around a daughter who is trying to cope with her father's decline and sadness and grief of his wife's disappearance and his wife's letters back to him at another time before the marriage solidified and they started really having troubles and you get to watch the marriage and relationship decline through those letters but you also get to see the grief and the sadness and the strain that the deterioration of their marriage had on this daughter and her sister it was really well done really well executed i really enjoyed it and i found that the story itself followed a really beautiful wave like feel it felt very beachy but not in like a it had that feeling of being on the beach with winter. Really sad, really mellow and dark, but not so dark that it wasn't beautiful. I really enjoyed it. I think it's a fabulous read and anyone who can have a chance to pick this up absolutely should. I received this arc from Tin House and I couldn't be more grateful to them for that. I will be doing... I will potentially be doing a full in-depth review of that in January or February when it officially hits the shelves. Let me know if you'd like to see that. I will talk to you guys soon and see you tomorrow.